we are back with the Laurel's Rest. We gotta get here to our ship. And then head to the city of Nekata. I think that's how it's pronounced. Not too sure, but uh, I hope so. The Laurel's Rest. Let us go there. Drink a my hot latte. Fortitude is one of the four defenses. It opposes attacks targeting the physical resilience of the character, such as knockdown, noxious burst, and most poisons. Why are there not uh, four defenses? Good God Almighty. <coughs> Why is it taking so long to load? I'm assuming there is a theme coming up, so I'll pause it here. Alright, here we go. There is a scene. Good, you are here. Clario has made good on his promise. Bomb speaker Ikawa. We are making ready to free your ship. Ikawa. Okay. Thank you. She gestures towards your vessel. Where a motley group of Hawana and Valian workers race to and fro. I say still that you are fortunate. The ship was nearly lost, but it will float. For how long, I cannot say. You will wish to find a friendly port with some speed, I think. Huh. Do you know where Nika Nikitaka is? So you will go to the great Kahanga city as well. You must sail north for some time, and then a little east. Take care in Nikitaka, outsider. It will close its jaws around you, and you will never notice. Come. We will see your defiant out to sea. Thank you. Yeah, we can put it back with us. The Defiant. I like the name. The USS Defiant. New quest. An honored guest. Beat the wax. You received a curious message from Harbinger Vatnir. Wax sealed letter. Harbinger's watch. A missive written in what looked like dried blood on a slice of tanned leather came to you rolled and sealed the mark of the aurochs. The lettering, spidery and sharp, suggests the sender may have been shivering as he composed it. Most glorious watcher of Kaid Nua, I cordially invite you to a feast to be held in your honor. A community of like minds has congregated at Harbinger's Watch, a small outpost located in the southern Dead Fire Sea. To witness the Dead Flow's rapid expansion, soon I shall consume all, and Rimrgrand's dominion over Dead Eora be un unchallenged. Remorgrand, god of entropy, cold winter, bad luck, famine, natural disasters. It seems this world is about to experience an ice age. We eagerly anticipate hosting your magnificence with admiration for your many accomplishments. Vatnir, high harbinger of dust. We should address the matter of our ship's resources before we get underway. Uh, see, medicine supply gain 12, repair supply gain 7. Irina, Irina was injured. What the hell? It saddens me to inform you that we lost several crew and most of our provisions during the storm. Get you home to the Alpha Quadrant. Or beat the Dominion with my defiant. However... Port Marge appears to be well supplied, and I expect the recent disaster has left several sailors in want of a ship. Okay, I already kind of did all that. I suggest we contract for additional supplies and crew before we return to open water, or our voyage may indeed be a short one. Did that already. Ship to ship combat. 
Principe and Plastrina, the Fortune Galleon. In dead fire, not every ship on the sea is friendly. Hostile ships can attempt to engage you in ship to ship combat. Our resources defense 50 out of 60, something else out of 100, something else out of 20, something people out of 11. During ship combat, distance and orientation to the enemy are vital to your success. Distance determines if the enemy is in range of your cannons or if you are in range of theirs. Orientation determines what cannons, if any, can, you can fire, as well as how easily your ship may be hit. Interesting. Yeah, just basically how you're facing them. Turning your side. Turning your side to the enemy may allow you to fire the most cannons, but it makes you an easier target. Each ship. That yeah, makes sense, because you're exposing more of your side, more part of your ship's volume and mass. Surface area. Each ship must maintain its sails, which I'm assuming is a 20 out of 20, and hull, which I'm assuming is a shield. Damaged sails limit the speed of a ship. If a hull is destroyed, the ship will sink. A ship's cannons are also limited by how much ammunition the ship is carrying. Positions, prepare to drive, turn to starboard, turn to port. Hold position, turn to starboard, report to base front back. When two ships get close to each other, they can board or ram. Boarding locks the two ships together and transitions to a deck to deck fight between the two ships. A ramming attack does damage to the hulls of both ships. If one does not sink, the battle transitions to a deck to deck battle. Once you have victoriously sunk the other ship or defeated them in deck to deck combat, you can plunder what remains. Plunder typically includes ship resources, treasure, and occasionally the unique triumph of a noteworthy enemy captain. Coins can be shared with the crew to improve morale, and triumphs are always flown from your ship's rigging. Interesting. Ship UI. There are several jobs on the ship that the crew needs to fill while sailing. Every ship needs deck hands, cannoneers, which are the ones these four corners, and a helmsman, which I'm assuming is up in the front. And all ships benefit from having a cook, surgeon, and navigator on board. The larger ships even require a boat swan to keep the deck hands in order. To place a new sailor on the ship, you must be in a port. Click on the available sailor from the known sailor section and move them to an open role on the ship. Note that each sailor has different talents. Not all sailors are well suited for a given job. Filter through the known sailor job types to see who excels at each role. Ship equipment and cargo. Your crew consumes both food and drink while adventuring. The type of food and drink you feed them will adjust their morale. More expensive provisions will make them happier. Cheap junk food will lower their morale over time. Minus one morale, meaning that it decreases, increases the morale from the negative. Even so, a few things will impact your crew's morale as badly as letting them starve. A starving crew with low morale may mutiny. If neglected for too long, some may even die. There are several jobs on a ship. The captain determines how likely the ship is to gain an advantage. First move and other bonuses in ship to ship combat. Deck hands are required to perform any maneuvers in ship to ship combat. If a ship does not have deck hands, it will move more slowly on the world map. The more skilled deck hands a ship has, the faster it will move in combat. Here's fail. Prepare to board. Thank you. 
both swing counts as a deck hand, but it is more important for the ability to accelerate the completion of special events, such as putting out a deck fire on the ship by coordinating their actions. Jog turns the ship's stern through the wind, drifting its elevation to the enemy vessel by 180 degrees. A helmsman is required returning and jive actions and the ship combat. More experienced helmsmen make the ship harder to hit after performing turn and jive actions. Cannons cannot fire without a cannoneer assigned to them. The more experienced the cannoneer, the more accurate their fire. Interesting. A surgeon increases the rate of healing for injured crew members in reserve, both in combat and while traveling. Supply food. Minus 25% cook plus 1 AM plus 1 KO dual. Two jaws have no combat rules. One may be called upon to resolve ship events. The navigator increases speed on the world map. And the cook reduces food consumption while traveling. Now this deck hand, deck hand. Carval Hall, right click for detail. Carval Hall. Using a fixed plank technique, which eliminates overlap. These smooth hulls require extensive caulking and support. This increases hull strength, allowing for additional sail plans and mass for larger ships. But you can time needed to repair damage seconds of the hull. Interesting. What's here? Cannoneer. Port Cannoneer. Port Cannoneer. Geo Dual Novice Helmsman Sailor. Experience 10, London Dwarf, the Deerwood Professional Job Traits, Boatswain, Helmsman, Navigator, Cannoneer, Cook, Boatswain, Helmsman, Irina, Novice Cook, Cook and Deckhand, and they have those little markers next to them, so that's her specialty, Navigator, Surgeon, Testing Crew, Cannoneer and Dickham. Cannoneer and Dickham. This, can you put it here now? Valian Hallbreaker. Boarding, while well, at long range, a vessel armored with Hallbreaker can have that dis distinct disadvantage. Close range of Hallbreaker is about equal. Novice Cannoneer. We got these. Oh. Deckhand. 
the old dog. Special K. Surgery and Cannoneer. Cook and Dickman. Helmsman and Boatswain. I think we're good there. Linen sales, cotton, we sales, plus five combat speed, minus two sail health, plus five travel speed. Less sail health, but more travel speed. Supply food minus ten percent for the cook. The, the stock for supplies available to heal the injuries. Ammunition, the current stock of gunboats and gunpowder on ship. The stock of pitch, lumber, and sturdy linen used to repair damage onto the ship. Journey to Harbingers is watch. A group calling themselves the Harbingers of Dusk have invited me to attend a feast in my honor. I don't know who they are exactly what they're celebrating me for. If I am to find out, I must travel to Harbingers to watch the group's outpost at the Dead Flow. Or level higher than me. Oh, beast of one two. Follow the reef towards the city. Abandoned village. Kept in front of Prince of Peace and Petrina. They're gonna attack me, seriously. I 
as the Defiant. The USS Defiant. Leaves Port Maje behind. You casually observe dozens of other ships coming and going. Mostly fishing and trade vessels. One craft stands out. An opposing doe. Deplete, replete with cannons. Press into view across the defiant starboard above. Bow. The flag raised high atop its tail signifies a wish to parlay. However, the doe approaches at an aggressive speed, suggesting that it may not be easily turned away. Let's face the panel. We spin the ship's wheel counterclockwise. The ship swings round quickly, disturbing a gull resting on the foremast. The bird voids a white spot on the deck as a sign of its disapproval. These and out reel the bear and bear straight towards the doe. The distance closes quickly, and soon the massive doe's hull rolls on the two ways beside your ship. Boarding planks emerge and are quickly cast onto your ship, along with shouts from its crew, notifying you that their captain will be boarding. Several well-armed men cross the planks, their eyes watching every inch of your ship. The crowd parts open to make way for their captain, a tall, well-dressed man. He appears at you with one impeccably groomed eyebrow raised. Following behind the captain and in stark contrast drives an unkempt warlock. A pair of pistol grips protrude from his belt, and he casually twirls, twirls a stocky firearm around his index finger. His shaggy face, framed by long cobalt blue hair and a wildly braided cerulean beard, makes the crooked smirk wreck the tree seem almost sincere. Oh, Lord. Am I gonna attack them and kill them? Deck on deck battle. Ado, Water of Cadno. On behalf of the Principe Sen Patrina, I must request we meet in Parley. Responding to the collapse of Grand Valia, 2728 to 2768 AI, the noble families packed up their household and sailed abroad. Seeking opportunities away from the shadow of their homeland. Over time, their old world traditions evolved into a new identity. The Principe Sen Petrina. The princess without a homeland. A loosely connected and regular organization of pirates. The broad shouldered captain up tilts his chin in greeting. When he smiles, his left cheek devotes a shallow dimple. He couldn't have asked before he boarded my ship uninvited. Ecosy. It has been some time since I last asked another's permission. He flourishes a courtly bow. I have heard some marvelous tales regarding your ventures in the Deerwood. Continue. In fact, you are the first dragon slayer I have ever met, outside of a grave. Some fools would seek to make a fortune by pilfering from one such as you. He's done his research. Might as well hear him out. Oh. Under the captain's words, you hear a faint but insistent buzzing. It blooms, the overwhelming Barante's voice, drowning out all else around you. No one else seems to notice. A vision. Thunder cracks between your ears, and you glimpse a different sun shod sea behind your eyes. Someone let the vision come. The vision streaks across your mind's eye, fleeting and incoherent. An elf, dark haired and battle hard. Stepping across the gulf between vessels. She shakes Forante's hand and warmth fills through you. Excitement, pride, respect. The imagery melts like candle wax into a lamp lit galley, swamped with the scent of unwatered rum and sweet fruit, with sailors in their songs and sweat. The scene billows away, ice cold and clawing, replaced with the crew on deck, solemn and staring. Esperante grasps one of their own by the throat. No, not one of their own, no more. You don't steal from family, and stay family. Tears and mucus mar the man's features. Esperante reads the man his last bites. Thief or no, they'll coast. They'll consign him to Andra, as tradition dictates. The vision passes, leaving you blinking on the deck of the Defiant, looking into Ferrante's face. 
He raises an eyebrow. I believe you have met such a fool. Captain Benweth of the Drake. Despite the gravity of his words, he smiles grandly and dimples cuts deeper into his left cheek. I know a cipher is handy with my feel it. Tell yours to stay out of my head. I remember the Drake. You say this Captain Benweth is the one who attacked me? Wait, who are the Prince of the DSMP train? And your furry turtle companion happens to be? This is the first you are hearing of us, truly? We are a magnificent but largely landless people, so we have come to own the sea. To survive, we must seize prosperity where we can. Hence, we are oft labeled as pirates, smugglers, merchants of illicit trade, or mercenaries. It will not always be so, but it is for now. I see, so y'all have plans to settle down eventually. But where? I remember the trick. You say this Captain Benwit is the one who attacked me? <laughs> the short-sighted scoundrel has been wreaking havoc in the area for months. Ack is a affirmative term. Ack. He is no son of Velia. I do not fault his ancestry, but he disregards too much the grand heritage we principally represent. Continue. Benwet is the second most selfish captain within the Principi's newest generation. He risks all that we value. So a rebel. Interesting. Does he want to be Pirate King? Principi King? Instead of a prince? We will find out. Maybe. If Benwet the second son, second most selfish captain, who's the first? The Principi's heritage is old alien. Why accept non valians into the Principi if they're going to cause trouble? Problems. If Benwith is one of your own, shouldn't you take responsibility for his actions? He pinches at his lips, eyes narrowing thoughtfully, but you can see that he's biting back a mischievous grin. Is he the most selfish captain? Perhaps I have said too much. This is a problem solely of my own. For now. The Prince of His Heritage is Old Valian, isn't it? We are descended from refugees who fled during Old Valia's decline. They sailed the Eastern Reach to the Deadfire. I see. But they did not settle the islands. Today, even, our shipboard life continues. Interesting. You guys are like those colony ships in Voyager that are just traveling from place to place. All their ships together into one big ship. Or those group of nomads that like to go to random parts of space and just explore. And then they have these outposts that they visit with a triple moon or Kess. Kind of got all excited to meet and that she wanted to leave the ship. And then the doctor was experimenting with different personalities and that kind of brought out the dark side of him and whatnot. Why accept non valians into the principle if they're going to cause problems? Few pirates retire comfortably, amigo. We sink and we hang or we... Amigo, die. amigo. We just took Spanish words and just changed the words around. We must replace our losses, accepting from many regions, including the Deadfire. And Benwet is one of your own. Shouldn't you take care of this, buddy? Benwet is no captain of mine, amigo. It is not beneath my flag his Drake sails. Is he, is he, is he or she? Because literally, I feel like he used the word she. And I see you using the word amigo to kind of ease me into a sense of camaraderie. Yet I do see his work. actions when they would endanger the principi altogether. Where might I find Captain Ben? Say I wanted to teach him a lesson. How are they endangered your little principi? Are you saying if we rile you, you will pose no threat to us? Ecosy, <laughs> pardon if I do not believe you, Dragon Slayer. He chuckles, fingers rubbing the frilled color of his throat. Word of Benweth's thread on the Defiant will spread throughout the Deadfire. More fools will seek to prey upon you. And that right there, folks, is the lore explanation for why we will be attacked at high sea, even though we're this powerful, epic watcher. So we can have the ship battles that they just implemented in this game. I would suggest you stave off all others by making an example of Benway. See? For our tease, for do my job for me, friend. Hope you don't die in the effort. The rogue words flit through your thoughts like darters. Not quite your own, but not entirely unlike your own either. 
Where might I find Captain Bandwidth? Say I want to teach him a lesson. I do. How would you want to help me? I will be honest with you, Amico. He sighs heavily. I do not favor Benwell, nor do I care for the company he keeps. Such fools and scoundrels serve only to tarnish the Principe's reputable name. I see. But I believe you will be capable of setting him straight. Okay. It sounds like if I defeat Benwith, I'll be doing you a favor. I want a boon for it. The good humor wipes from his face. Of course, Amico. Work with me, and I will weight your pockets with gold. When you have dealt with my problem, I will prepare a fine welcome for you at my port. Now, a tip for you. Ace. His smile returns twofold and he nods amiably. Benwith Drake took damage during the storm. Eventually, he will need to dock for repairs, and when he does, Serefin can find him for you. Orante flourishes a hand towards Orlan at his side. He is rather an unrefined creature, but he is a most skilled ship hunter, I assure you. Unrefined? Begging your pardon, Captain, but I'll be the eye fucking model of the gentleman of fortune. <laughs> Orlan's cost. As for Benwith, that sucker of squid tits be as predictable as the tide. But wager all my furriest bits that he'd set sail for deadlight. That would be felicitous indeed. As I believe the traitor Remaro hides there as well. I quite enjoy killing two men with a single bullet. Wouldn't have even thought of it if you hadn't brought it up, sir. Yet you feel a surge of anger that's not your own. Seraphine spins towards... Now, I ain't hardly in any hurry to leave the fine company of the gentlemen of leisure, but the captain be right about me finding your mark. Adding to that, you sail into Fort Deadlight not knowing your innies from your outies, you might very well find the locals cannon-fucking your boat to sudden splinters. Probably. Why loan me your best ship hunter? What venture does not require an investment to be prosperous? The Seraphine is an allowance, which I expect you will return, in one payment or another. What can you do for me? Are you asking aside from my vaunted ship hunting abilities, self-evident manners, and cyclopedic know-how of all things piratical? Heath glint between the curves of a smile, I love the his lips into a thin line. Yes, aside from the audience. Well, there'll be me knowing my way around Fort Deadlight, so named on account of it being a fortress and all. I got my contacts inside, and I'll be half handy with a gun if shit goes belly up. I was more thinking, what else do you offer? Are you good with teamwork? Because my crew is built on trust, not just skill. So we work as a team, it's trust. I don't know you, man. So, do you work well in teams? Can you take orders? Add to that, Chain of command, follow it. Eyes. Or so the lasses tell me. Irrelevant. Now, you sound more like a distraction than an orderly conduct. I'm sure they're just being kind quite easily. I'll be the old package on and off, Captain. Yeah. As you see, Seraphine is both insufferable and marvelously useful. Are you eager to join Well, of course I'll be eager to give Benworth the old Evo. That half cock's been a pain in our asses for the better parts of, uh, well, too fucking long. Yep. I agree. I definitely want to hear all the dialogue. I say bother to report them way more than at the last game. So I'm picking these extra lore slash develop character development, story development dot scenes instead of just picking the main dialogue to move on. You said you met him, I? Seems the type that needs a bullet, Tony. Projects his words a tad louder than necessary. Thoughtful, Shoti rubs a knuckle along the edge of her jaw. Welcome aboard, Seraphine. Oh, you won't be regretting this, Watcher. At least so long as you keep us heavy in grog and light on the onions. Ugh, them dirty shit apples ain't never agreed with me, and I'll be suspecting they never will. I see his pee pats his belly as he strides to your side. Them dirty shit apples ain't never agreed with me, and I am suspecting they never will. He's not sleeping near my berth, I promise you that much. I see. Aeloth is not a fan of this Orlan. I sail now for Dunnage, my own safe port. I will await you there, should you be successful in schooling our wayward captain. 
huge. I wonder how big this map is. How the Dead Fire Archipelago. Do we explore the whole thing? Is this like the Caribbean? Choose a single class or multi class for this companion. <laughs> hmm. Witch Cypher. The class Mild Mind. Witch Barbarian plus Cypher. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick to Cypher. I'm not a new player, but I'm also not an expert. Welcome aboard, my friend. We got a couple of locations we can work on. The abandoned village. This is a different island, I'm assuming. It's not where we're going. Minus one more hard track. Minus five water. Meriel the Mod. I think this this island isn't that big. But they have little mountains you can explore. And from the human perspective, this island is pretty big. Port Maje Alice is bigger. Let's avoid unnecessary flights. Alright. Boom, what's this here? Hunter 14. Yeah, uh, here you can't cross this cross these mountains. Sweet. Let's go here. Taking us at least a number of hours. Camp. Ooh, this is an event. Merle the Mad. This is what this island looks like. Lots of mountains and such. <laughs> mm -hmm. Enemies ahead. He likes hand mortar. Blunderbuss one handed. Quality is fine. 15 to 14 to 20. Both of shots, basic attacks, deal, best of pierce. He's a two handed individual. Pistol and pistol. Scorching venom, five burn damage per three seconds. For thirty seconds, second for thirty seconds. into the tear. Okay. Definitely doesn't need anything from me. Two deflection. History plus one insight. And a mancer's hat. Being near a killed enemy grants temporary damage reduction. I shall put it to good use. Okay. You're good at might, perception, resolve, and And mechanics, athletics, metaphysics. Oh, he's knowledgeable in metaphysics. Makes sense. Plus, go oh, whip to weapon style. Wow. Speeding cut. And resolve.
My strike shocks the target's visual receptors, blocking them to nearby enemies. Seen down and grow his to hits. Wrathful present. Picking you with now the missile effect them. Hmm. Excuse that. Withdraw. Let's get this out. As for you, and the 20 focus. Okay. Yeah. Let's get you over here. A lot. Let's make you do. You know what? Let's just let you do your thing. Let's go. Let's go crazy. Sympathy for the lost. Call upon the souls of those that have agreed to follow you. Your presence distracts all souls in the area. I don't think I need that right now. level for the duration of the fight. Power level is a measure of the overall power of your character. All active spells and abilities are modified by the power level and become more powerful as you gain levels. Some items, spells, and abilities may also influence your power level. Interesting. Pierce 4, burn 4. Very time 20%. Final. Plus 1. Fine rod, two-handed. They're slower. needs this. Hmm. 
you break your scepter. Armor five and I lost leather gear. Oh, it's actually better. Okay, it's pros and cons to this, John. What can I do you for? I don't know. Sure thing. I. Huh. Oh. oh. I guess we're going up north. Promising, Rowan. <laughs> we can search this. Two hours passed for nothing. Oh. Yeah, there's nothing left. And that's it. Let's go back to our ship then. <laughs> Who's injured? Injured. Click on the known locations drop down list to bring up a list of places you have discovered. You can also search for a location by name. Ships trail faster in deep water, slower in shallows. Church crew. Get on the ship's task, very cool. Bar. When on the deck of a ship, you can select to access the world map. Yeah, don't let's talk. Mariner salutes. Ahoy, Captain. Truth be told, Ferrante half expects us to get our asses blown out of the water at Fort Deadlight. Fortunately for you, I have this bad habit of beating the odds. Your voice does not match your face, brother. Of course, I do that by way of good old traditional chicanery. And the most important part of any horn swoggle? Solid planning. Well, uh, like a horn swoggle. surviving. Can you tell me about this fort? Valian made originally. Piled them stones up a few centuries back, but gave it up when the fishmen wouldn't leave them be. Hard to defend against wilder crawling up out of your crappers. Continue. Captain Aldi's claimed it a few years back. Fucking filthy from bow to stern. She had her lads and lasses cleaning fish shit out of the floorboards for months. A couple of them thought he might be better sailing elsewhere and left in the night. Aldi's tracked them down quick as you like, took their heads, and fixed them into little lanterns for the front gate. Called them Fort Deadlights Deadlights. Nose twitches continue. They say she ain't had a deserter since. Uh, tad cruel for my taste. But I admit to admiring the wordplay. Do you know anything about the fort's defenses? Funny thing about it being a fort means it ain't a boat. Means it don't have to worry about the weight of cannons or storing onkin' big balls. Guns they got crowned in that castle put a hole in your poop deck before you've sighted land. He thighs and scuffs his boot against the floor. Fort itself be floored to sealing rum sodden fools, so that be going for us. But Aldis keeps the crew on the walls sharp and sober.
continue. One blast of their horns and deadlights locked up tight as an adhere and mugger night. We'll stay that way too, till any unfamiliar ships have been shot to shit and shot again. I see. Do you, what do you know of Aldi's? Yeah, she's sharp as shit, that one. Tongue, mind, and ears alike. Sailed out of Deerwood or Adir one. Knows her not, and how to crew a ship that won't turn sour. But words ring out among the Principe. Principe. You think for new blood. That's well, not Principe. It's Principe. Continue. Part of that's a fierce support of freedom. From slavers, from the empires, from the Juana's caste system, even. Ah, uh, see? Continue. The rest are lenient and step out of line, and Ferrante's got your old crew up for lashes. Aldis, though, she's uh, Aldis, not Aldis. Aldis. She attracts limp cocks, nut twists, or Benwith. Okay then. Can't say I much approve of a lack of regard for our traditions, but uh, can't say I don't share a vexations with Ferrante and the old guard neither. Ferrante and the old guard. Interesting. So I guess she's part of the new guard. They're changing the Principe. He runs a furred paw over his braided beard. Shouldn't the Principe do something about all these? Ah, the Principe's no fleet. More a mishmash of fiercely independent captains. Irony. A lot of them take to one another. Freedom or security? The age-old question. But we be bound by the slippery slip knots of tradition. Even those buck in tradition cooperate for protection against our enemies. But they do. Cooperate, we'll okay. Yeah. Many of the old guard have died off, though, and the new blood flooding in be uh, less the civil sort. Indeed, that is how things go. You rise, and then you fall, to once again rise. You mentioned you have contacts at the fort. Can we rely on their help? Oh, I did say contacts, didn't I? Oh boy. Seraphine rubs the back of his head as he takes a sudden studious interest in his boots. Contact would be more accurate in the singular. Alas, by the name of Siri. Been running the same circles huh, for years. Siri, so many ways to spell that. Fair winds. We're never family, but uh, never on the wrong ends of arms, neither. Continue. Might have uh, shaken the sheets a few months back. Oh boy. Regardless of how she feels about me, there's no love lost betwixt her and Benwith. That's for damn certain. Your contact is some random lover of yours. Ugh, random. What do you take me for, Captain? An idiot. The scourge of hearts throughout the dead fire. Well, I can't say as you're entirely wrong. He grins all teeth. Let's go over the plan to get into Fort Delight. Ah, Deadlight's a tough coconut to crack. But if not cracking, what are nuts for? Exactly. Let's do a frontal assault. We should sneak our way in. I think this calls for a clever approach. On a second thought, our current plan is good. We should, maybe we should try sneaking in. Is there a way? Might be there's a way to sneak inside. Bet we can find a shady spot to tie up a skiff under the veil of night. Then up the walls and over. Quick as you please. Sussing out a place to land without being spotted ourselves require Helia's own eyes. Or a spyglass. Uh... Never got a spyglass, I hope. Don't you? Yeah, sure. Used to. Then I made the mistake of lending it to Ferrante. Apparently forgot it weren't his. <laughs> Low growl boo beneath the grumbling. Showed him the S I carved into it and he turned around and told me it stood for spyglass. There's an important lesson to be learned there. You take something to see, you hold grip on it real tight. I don't have a spyglass. I recommend you remedy yourself there, Captain. A good spyglass, be like a good lover. Shows you the bits you'd have missed otherwise. Alright, let's see what about the other options. A tough coconut to crack. What about a frontal assault? Yeah, if you insist on the straightforward approach, you could always load the old with powder and balls and hope the walls of dead if you breach the walls, you still got the guards to attend to. Adding to that a mess of pirates. Yeah, I don't want to deal with a that. Tough coconut to crack. What about a clever cracking, approach? What are nuts for? Smart play for crashing any party involves scavenging yourself up an invite. And then dress into impress. This might be the most viable one. He puffs his chest, thumbs tucked into the fabric of his shirt. Four deadlight sends out invitations. So what are you getting Looking at? The part in this case means hoisting colors identifying us as Principe. Principe. Continue. I don't have to tell you how dangerous such a bit of fabric can be if the wrong person catches you flying it. 
and will attack a Principe ship and capture their flag. We have a plan, let's go with it. How hard could it be to purchase a flag? Well, Principe captains don't just give up their flags for a few coins. He scratches his rump, head cocked to one side. Nakitaka's black market. If there be a Principe flag for sale, it'll be there. Market Lock it up. Only relocates every so often to avoid the royal guard. We'll just have to find wherever it currently be anchored. Okay then. And we'll attack a Principe ship. We have a plan. Let's go with it. All right, Captain. Looking forward to watching you. Hey. From the Morgari. Agrasima, Casita, for taking me on. Been here. Will do. Show team. Ship life sure is an adventure, ain't it? Just think of all the places we can sail to, all the sights we could see. There's nothing like being stuck. There's nothing like being stuck on a farm or cloistered in the back of a temple. Shorty wraps her sickle against her thigh as she studies the boat's layout. Satisfied by whatever she sees, she tilts her head to you with a small smile. Tell me what's on your mind. What's your thoughts on Aeltis? Talking during the Saints' War or after he died? What's the difference? Well, before he died, he was still Aethis as the majority of my brethren know him. Aethis embodied a human. And when that human got blown to bits, we all believed Aethis died. Not in agreement. Oh, Aethisians. And I think a part of him did. The part he'd most closely woven into live in flesh. The part that represented life and rebirth after death. Which means the part of him that could have survived, that stormed across the dead fire seas, was the side more aligned with obsession, rot, and falling away. That which is death. No need to fiddle foot around. How are you I'm feeling? Listening. Have you suffered any recent nightmare? They're there in my head when I sleep, and sometimes I can taste them on the back of my tongue like a smear of grit. Happens when I take in a particularly... Volatile soul. Don't worry, we'll figure something out. Will we? Ought we? I just don't know. <sighs> Continue. I trust you, Watcher. I swear I do. I just... I worry sometimes about what's gonna happen to me. But, well... Well what? Continue. It's not like I can turn my back on my duty to my god, even if it kills me. Why a smile left across his lips? I'm glad we talked. What new shores we say sail today? Ah, hurry there, Captain. She too pegged. Any idea that we're at, Captain? A law. Thank you again for maintaining my story in front of Vanessa and the others. He gives you a grateful smile that fades almost as quickly as it appears. I didn't enjoy deceiving them, but it seemed simpler than the alternative. Old Duggery. Shodi flicks her sickle back and forth. Simple explaining your involvement with the leaden key? Absolutely. Keeping up a lie is never simple. You should know that better than anyone. I'm surprised you managed... It's still mere that long. It's still mere a past iteration of Elot Kosir's soul. It's still mere was a brash, pile speaking elven woman who lived in Adir long ago. She used to be a woman. He awakened in Elot's soul after his father attacked him and frequently got him into trouble with her cheeky comments and aggressive behavior. And lonelier, you seem to care for them, but they didn't really know you. Does it matter? It's like you're gonna see him. I'm surprised you managed it's on me that long. We've come to an arrangement of sorts. Really? Hey, he lets me in on the bash and I'll leave him the join. Oh, that's that's Isomir. For the most part, anyhow. 
Five. Believe me, I take no pleasure in duplicity. Remind me, how did we know one another? Ah, the steward told me about your incident at Cadnua. He cocks his head and gives you a searching look. Aethys took a piece of your soul. I suppose it's only natural to lose a few memories along with it. You and I met in Gilded Vale. Shortly oh, after your that was a serious question. I thought that was me joking. My run in with the locals. You meant to say that comment with a joke, like, bruh, us and duplicity, come on, how we meet again? Right? Because it's indicating we met on duplicitous terms. Right? I didn't know his full story. It gives you a tight, uncomfortable smile. If that bam pot was chafing his own mother's daughter, worth no ill of mine for noticing. <laughs> yeah, the question briefly melts into a wickedly mischievous grin as Esomir, his awakened personality, merges and recedes. Go on. I remember Esomir accused a man of indiscretion. What's his own sister? Ah, uh, yes. Esomir calls someone a sister. Now let's go with number two. <laughs> Just so. His mouth quirks into a small grin. Even as the tips of his ears turn pink. I was with you as you sought Theos and answers regarding your awakening. Yep, Theos X Arcanon was a member of the Inguitan civilization and grand master of the Leaden Key, an organization devoted to keeping the secrets of the gods. Having allied with the goddess Uodika, Theos possessed the power to recall the memories of all his past lives. Making him one of history's most notorious schemers, he was killed by the Watcher of Kaid Noah, bringing an end to Deerwood's Hollowburn Crisis. And you helped me come to terms with mine. Yeah, Arcanus. So many years and still he's cold as a crag on his teeth. I've learned to appreciate Isselmir's decisiveness, if not her way with words. Glad you're doing better. Uh, back to our journey across the Deerwood. We pursued Theos and discovered the leaden key at the center of Widewind's legacy. A widespread blight of unknown origin, which may be then the Deerwood, began to be born without souls, so named because its origin roughly coincided with the death of Saint Widewind in the Saints' War. And, more importantly, the millennia old conspiracy to conceal the true origins of the gods. And more importantly, a millennial old conspiracy to conceal the true origins of the gods. What were the origins? What did you do after all this? At least we ended the Hollowbird Scourge. I wish we could have whispered all the children of Deerwood. They also received his due for his crimes. Impressive bit of trickery on the part of the Inguitans. Yet so little changed. The people of Deerwood continued with no knowledge of the greater forces at work. Once, that might have surprised me. Yeah, the expression turns thoughtful after a long pause, he looks back at after you. After we parted, I set out to destroy the Leaden Key. It's controlled us for too long. I wanted to free Kith from it. So for five years, I've been tracking down Leaden Key circles. Searching for the places where they operate in secret. He not knits his brows, shorty nibbles on her lips to hide a spreading smile. Trying to undo them. You're doing the right thing, don't forget it. Might as well start with the ones operating from crystal waters in sandy beaches. Just make sure they never can commit an atrocity like Wideman's legacy. Doing the right thing, don't forget it. The task has been more difficult than I anticipated. I don't think I fully understood the weight of the decisions I would have to make. All the burden of living with them. It was much easier when I only had to follow someone else's lead. My father's, Theos's, yours. He glances at you out of the corner of his eye. Easy, sure. I led you right into the prison of a, into the prison of the gods. We all have to stand on our own eventually. You had a sense of purpose when you began. Don't lose it. There's some way I can help. What do you mean? You had. A sense of purpose when you began this. Don't lose it. Is there some way I can help? I wish I knew. After we defeated Theos, I thought the hard part of undoing his work would be tracking down the Leaden Key's members and operations. <laughs> Too bad you burned his robes. He gives you an appreciative smile, but his mind is clearly elsewhere. Edder seems pleased. 
Lighthearted, lighthearted. I'll show you lifts her chin in interest. Perhaps this would be easier with an example. I went to a village in Old Valia. A run-down backwater river place. North and south of Erglon Fath, far north and south. Have a problem with the Empire's Adrian expansion efforts along with the steep economic decline led the Valian colonies to secede. In 2641, AI establishing themselves as the Valian Republic, a confederacy of allied city states. For the next century, Grand Valia collapsed into Old Valia as more and more nobles and their retainers fled the Empire, many of them immigrating to the dead fire. Initially trying to survive as merchant ships, these immigrants eventually descended into piracy as their trade networks decayed and were taken over by nascent Valian and Rotian colonies. I right home like it was. I lost expressing shifts as Islamia briefly emerges. Uh, centuries ago, the leaden key had intervened to end some heretical cult. The details were lost, but what had endured was a practice of ritual bloodletting. A gruesome, pointless tradition. The premises. At every full moon, the villagers would feed the soil with their blood. No one, young or old, sick or hale, was exempt. What did you do? The village priest administered the practice. Grim old fellow. Reminded me of Theos. He raised an eyebrow at you. El Bonbag. Tis what the lad means. He was a tyrant. I was certain that if the villagers were free of his influence, they'd be free from the bloodletting too. Let me guess, you were wrong. And they were just too devoted. So I arranged for him to have an accident. He gives you a sly look, sure he puffs out a hearted breath. <laughs> And then? The old man died. And the villagers were terrified. They were convinced his death was an ill omen. They blamed it and every other mishap that befell them on their lack of faith. Well, let me guess, they committed mass suicide. So they began bloodletting every week, turning on their neighbors for giving too little. He has lips twist as if worse than such a bitter taste. Instead of a handful dying each year, a few perished every week. And then the village died. Now you feel responsible for that, maybe you should have left them alone, you could've... Uh... If you barely understood this ritual, how did you expect to stop it? You try to do the right thing, that's what that matters. Is that it? I had to do something, didn't I? He turns to you with wide, anguished eyes. He pauses again, twisting his sash. I keep wondering what I might have done differently, or, or how I could have known better. The villagers chose this. They're to blame here, not you. I suppose so. I should get some rest. It's been a long day, and you've given me a lot to think about. You still haven't told me about... The animators have to do with this. Ah, that. I'm looking for an old leaden key sect. I've found several ref- I want to be sure. Uh, please, let me go over my notes again. Then I promise I'll tell you everything. Alright, we'll talk later. We got going on. Talk to you, Edder. I got time. Good. Right. All party members can empower. One injured crew. This injured. Injured or
Could be healed, crew member must be resting in the reserve, so I can help once they're by healing you from the first way. Plus 20% heal rate, injured for 5 days. Just wow, it's pretty big. Oh, holy shit, it's pretty far. Fort Deadlight. Oh. Dunnage. Harbingers Watch. This is where we're going. Then with a return to Fort Deadlight. This entrenched fortress occupies a small island in the southwestern region of the Dead Fire. All men of pirate posts call Dead Light their home. Getting to Benwith either through force or subterfuge won't be easy. Harbinger's Watch. That's where that is. Koana, RDC, TC. Unaffiliated trade ships. Storm, Harbor, Point of Interest, Capital City, Docked Ship, Colette, God Awoken. Who are being pursued? Well, weathered Cormiel. The Define beats to win card attacking between port and starboard. With all appropriate speed, your ship is faster than your crew better prepared. You secure the wind gauge before the Woolworths crew had that opportunity to come about. Claim it for themselves. Through the course of action. Full speed ahead. The enemy crew might be scoring for a fight, but you're in no hurry to give it to them. You advance towards your pulling ship at your own time.
Opposing captain swings a whirl into starboard. Fire the port cannons. Enemy resources 75. In shot targets enemy ships sailed and has a low chance of dealing above deck crew damage. Grape shot targets enemy ships above deck crew and has a low chance of doing sail damage. Fires Valian Hallbreaker. Hit 13 damage to sail. The enemy crew scurry to their station in preparation for maneuvers. The whirlwind misjudged the wind's direction. As the crew executes their maneuver, the ship sails abruptly fluttered loose on their mast. The ship comes to a stop. The defined beat to when we're attacking, beating port and starboard with all appropriate speed. Your ship is faster and your crew better prepare. The whirlwind's crew has come about and claim it for themselves. position. Fire the starboard cannons, buddy. to try. Yes, sir. Alright, this is the strong one. Should have got them with the hull breaker on the damn it.
I'm out. Okay, go to a mess. Ah, damn it. Try to try. Hard. Ah, uh, that just gets them over here. While well, the jive stuff makes them go further. Fire port cannons. Come on, stop. Oh, I spent so much money. shot nice I think all right let's just do short terms starboard and port oh god my sails are about to go too crap Your crew is dead. The ship tilts beneath you and slides to the floor.
still don't know how to repair my ship. Let's just go straight for that. Real preacher. Shipwreck. Or dead. Approaching a pirate stronghold with a risky venture, even for the most skilled of mariners. Any ship not flying a principal flag that's sighted in deadly shallows must may be raided. Abaddon's iris boot, cap, them guns, and even bigger than a river. Seraphine looks up at the fortress from the deck. The hells. I can be vouchsafing you with the guards if you can be getting us to dock without being blasted fits twice over. Otherwise, I'd be recommending you sneaky support you've got. That. Under the cover of night, we go to the shore, there's the harrowing walls, and we creep forward in search of a way into the fort. And that's where we'll continue next time. Subscribe, comment, leave a like.